once again, this is Hashim Whitmore will be the world's greatest barber.com. Hey, I appreciate everybody that's been logging in, checking out my channel, subscribing, sending me emails, and it's just been wonderful, man. This is just uh, truly amazing. So, uh, today, uh, I wanted to address the questions that I've been getting because a lot of people, they come into barbering and they want to know um, what's the best way to build their clientele. And one of the best ways I say to build your clientele is really, you gotta, uh, if you're new in the shop, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna be cutting kids, you know, and there's nothing wrong with cutting kids. You know, when I first got into the shop, you know, um, at fresh out of barber school, you know, people, you know, they kind of, all the other barbers kind of threw kids at me, right? You know, the kid come in the shop, and cats would just disappear. <laughs> and I'd be like, man, what the, what's going on? And then when I got kids in the uh, in the chair, I very quickly realized that, man, these kids are some work. I mean, it's some real work. I mean, you'll be tired. These kids will be moving. They'll be crying. It'll be all types of, you know, uh, all types of things going on with them. Because, you know, for a kid... It could be a real uncomfortable situation. And for a barber trying to uh, hold on to a kid and cut, it could be even worse, you know. And then, you know, with the kids, you you know, that's one thing, but the parents could be another thing, you know. Parents, there's some parents that just sit back and yell at the kid a million times, be still, be still, be still. And you're like, man, lady, or dude, help me out with this kid, man. <laughs> You know, this is like too much, you know, and you're kind of stressed out because you got these sharp clippers in your hand, a kid crying, and maybe a parent that is not being helpful, you know, or maybe yelling at the kid or doing something uh, crazy. You know, some parents, they build up the, 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 you know, the actual haircut and make it so dramatic. I have one lady, uh, um, she was real cool, came, put her kid in the chair, and then she was like, oh, my baby, you know, I'll be back in just a minute. Oh, take care and all this kind of stuff. And like scared the hell out the kid and then left. And so the whole time uh, she was gone, he's looking out the window, looking for the mom. And it was just, just crazy, you know. So to help people see the benefit in kids before we, you know, I told you a couple, a little bit of the stuff that, sometimes makes you know makes it uncomfortable and, you know you want to if you want some clientele for life you know uh, cutting kids is a way to, way to go kids always in the haircut back to school certain events picture days uh, games if they get involved with sports things like that so you have and once they get comfortable with a barber they won't want to go anywhere else but to you so a lot of my kid clientele you know I've been cutting them for over 12 years now and it's an amazing process to see kids grow up uh, get their uh, get their driver's license or uh, graduate from high school go off to college start bringing their kids back to you you know it's a is a quite an amazing process but the key is you get a client for life you know and through that one kid you know uh, parents will ask that kid, parents, where they get the haircut, and they bring you more and more uh, clientele. So, uh, focusing on uh, that age group or kids in general, and being and learning how to actually take care and manage uh, that experience, uh, it can reap a lot of returns, and it could be a continued stream of income, and that's really what you really want. You get clientele that you know. Uh, back, you know, how to do their hair, you know what they like, and, and really with kids, after around sometimes the third or fourth cut, you know, they're used to you, they're comfortable, and you know how to really get down and cut their hair, get them in and out real quick. So, so a couple things that really help when you have, a, you're about to cut a kid. So, one, I would say before you even put the kid in the chair to go over it, greet the parent, shake the parent's hand, let let the kid know that um, they're going to be in a safe environment and that, you know, the parent is actually introducing you 
to the kid. You know, introduce you to them and then kind of invite them over to the chair and let them sit down, uh, you know, drape them up, you know, and talk to them just like you would any other, you know, client, you know, tell them, you know, to, you know, to relax, put their hands down, whatever it may be, you know, and make sure that it's kind of comfortable, you know, comfortable environment for them, you know. I always recommend, like, if you're doing kids, especially ones that may move or may fall asleep, uh, or, you know, are, are criers or whatever, you start off, uh, if they get a, if get a lineup, get that lineup out the way as soon as possible, you know, because after a while, you've been fading their head or anything like that, and then you try to do it later, and, you know, they, their, their time and their patience for sitting still might be gone, so if you get that lineup in, then from there, you know, worst case scenario, you gotta go all even, you gotta do a short ball, you know, a short ball fade, you get that, get them in and out very quickly. Two, you know, if you do have a kid, you know, crying is one thing, uh, and most of the time you can cut through a crier if they stay still, but if they're moving around and, you know, shifting and crying all this kind of stuff and waving their arm, you know, have a, you know, have their parent come over, sit with the kid, drape them up, let them hold on to the kid because your job is not to wrestle with a kid, you know, and to to try to forcefully make them get a haircut, you know. And if it's really too bad, you know, just explain to the uh, to the parent that you're not going to be able to do the service because he's not ready to actually sit down and let you perform the service. And for his sake, you know, for your sake, you don't want to cause a trip have a traumatizing experience, maybe, you know, nick a kid or scar him with a line or cut the air or something like that because this kid is moving too much. So for his safety, the parent's safety, you know, sometimes it's better just to let, you know, to let that go, you know, because kids will, um, will take a lot of work, you know. So, uh, you know, so just to recap, uh, use your parents as, as the holders for your kids that are moving, make sure you introduce yourself um, to the parents to, to build that uh, relationship, that rapport. You know, uh, always, if you notice anything that's going on with the kid, if it's uh, a scar, a bruise on their head, anything um, that you see, make sure you take the time out, you inform the parent that, hey, I see this situation going on, uh, what is, you know, and ask questions. What's going on here? Have you, has he been treated for this? Are you using a certain type of shampoo? Has anything been changing? What's going on, you know, what's going on with this situation? You know, so, and so don't overlook anything, especially with kids, because you're going to be the person responsible. You're going to be the person that last touched the hair. So if there's a scar, if there, there's a scratch, always bring it to the, to the parent's attention. That way, you free yourself of any responsibility. And if it's something that you did do, uh, say you, you you cause a scar, you, you uh, your clippers, uh, nick the kid or something like that, make sure you tell the parent immediately, hey, this is what happened, this is what's going on. And then, you know, and, and assume that responsibility. That will bring a build of trust in that relationship, you know. Um, one thing, ringworms. Man, this... Uh, uh, ringworm is something that's still around, and it happens. Uh, you come across different cases of it uh, at different degrees, you know. So uh, be sure to be um, really vigilant on, uh, you know, observing the hair, taking a look, and seeing what cases. If you ain't never seen it, ringworm is actually a little circle, and you'll actually see the worm uh, kind of make, making its way, and it, you'll. If in time that you know kids or your clients will that will, it'll lose hair because it eats up at the you know the root of the of the hair and so it creates a bald spot. So make sure that you always carry um, like an antifungal. You can use um, uh, the stuff that they use for athletes' feet. That also kills a ringworm. Make sure you put that in your head. Maybe send them on on their way. But you're always gonna if you run across a kid that has it, you're gonna want to ask the parent. What stage is it at? You know, have you uh, have you um, treated it 
are you using a topical or a cream on it? Have you gone to the doctor? Because after so long, if ringworm it stays on the scalp and it's untreated, you'll have to actually get antibiotics to kill it from the inside because it gets in your bloodstream. You know, not saying that you uh, can't cut uh, somebody that has had a ringworm, but you need to make sure that you understand what stage it is in. Is it already been treated? Is it something that you just need to, uh, you know, uh, make sure that you sanitize for? You know, and your comfort level because you don't want to, because uh, ringworm is so uh, easily contagious and like a lot of diseases, you know, uh, out there, you want to make sure that you have the best sanitizing practices. You have some Lysol, you have some disinfectant wipes, you have a backup cape. That way you can make sure that you keep everything clean, sanitary for all your clients. You know, so, uh, you know, and kids can't tell you that. Kids can't tell you everything or where they got it or how long they had it. So make sure that you consult with parents, you know, and if there's a young kid, make sure that you understand, put together the parameters like, hey, this is not a daycare center. <laughs> I mean, parents will come in and drop their kids off and be gone for hours sometimes and then you have this little kid in the shop just sitting there and you're waiting for the parent you know and that's not cool make sure that the kid is a little kid you know uh, make sure the parents stay with them you know it's their it's their child's their responsibility you know and make sure that you know parents stay with them you know especially with new clients you know uh, you know make sure that you, know, you have established a relationship and that if there's any questions about anything, they're right there so that they can answer questions. You know. Um, also, your consultation with the with the kid you know, or with the parent. You know, you'll get these parents that have these kids with just this big old um, a whole lot of hair, and then they'll ask for some crazy style. And this kid is a a mover, a shaker. He's been running around the shop. Save yourself some time. Suggest something. Uh, something a lot simpler if you if you can and then or you know it might be uh, in or without your range of something that you might want to deal with you know because um, a moving child a real intricate cut sometimes that's just a recipe for a lot of frustration uh, backache sweating and just trying to get through it so uh, if you have any questions I'm going to be uh, also posting up soon um, some tips some tricks uh, on um, the website be the world's greatest bar